welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irina, and today I have a very special guest, Jennifer Kent. So Jennifer is a Knitting Guild Association hand master weaver. She is also a knitting designer and knitting enthusiast. I've heard, and I want to talk to you today about the guild and very exciting event that we are planning to do together in January. I know it's September now, and it sort of sounds funny that we're talking about January already, but you guys want to stay tuned and listen to that. So in January, we're going to start a knit along with the Knitting Guild Association, and it's going to be a knit your own adventure cardigan. And the name of it so far... I think it's going to be pick your pattern cardigan. And we're going to come back to that event and that cardigan and we'll talk about it. But before we start that, can you tell me, like, when did you start knitting? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I don't remember exactly when. I was very, very young. I think my, my mother taught me to crochet first mm-hmm. when I was maybe, I don't know, four or five. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I started actually knitting, knitting maybe when I was about six years old um, and just loved it from the beginning. Um, couldn't get enough. I even, I made, I remember making a um, a blanket and a cardigan and baby booties for my second grade teacher who was pregnant at the time. And I just, I, you know, went to, went to town um so yeah it's been many many years um of uh hand knitting and yeah and was your mom like very prolific knitter and crochet uh believe it or not she actually was more of a crocheter than a knitter um she had one pattern that she stuck with and she made blankets for pretty much Anyone in the family, whoever was having a baby, got another blanket. Whoever got married got a blanket. So she just, that was her thing. Um, Hand knitting itself, uh, I sort of, she taught me the basics. And then I kind of taught myself the rest just from books and research and, you know, all the different techniques. Um, But she really gave me the the core basics, um, the most important stuff. Well, one of another uh, guild handmaster knitters that I interviewed, Suzanne Bryan, had this concept of like natural born knitters. Somebody (laughs) gets to it right away and it's just like so natural, like you were born to knit basically, whether you knew it or not. Do you think you are one of those people? I think I absolutely (laughs) identify with that for sure. Yeah, I, I feel like... I even, there was one point in time um, where I thought, oh, maybe I'll do a different career. I'll do something else. And I, I thought of giving it all up and it just, I, it it just didn't happen. (laughs) I couldn't stop. Um, So yes, I absolutely identify uh, with that statement for sure. Well, how did you, how were you learning? I mean, it's like, I understand your mom was giving you the basics, but like, how did you get the information? Was it from books? Was it from classes? Yeah. So my mom had a lot of um, pattern books that I still have, believe it or not. Um, They're ancient, but I I cherish them. Um, I would just, you know, read the pattern until I figured out what the heck they were saying. (laughs) And a lot of the patterns back then, I mean, these were books from like the 50s. the patterns are, were not as specific as they are today. So there was a lot of trial and error in trying to figure out exactly what that knitting language really was. Um, but I don't know. I just sort of had an affinity for it. So I, I figured it out and I guess did it my own way, whether it was right or wrong, until, you know, later on um, through the knitting guild that I actually, you know, learned the real right way to do it or the correct technique so that it looked the way I want it to look instead of just, you know, um, Bringing how it. it ended up, how it ended up looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, you actually one of the rare people who made knitting uh, a professional career by going to college and studying knitting. I did. And there's yes. like this, uh, perception in the U S specifically that you can't, 
learn knitting. You just sort of like figure it out on your own or you take up mm-hmm. classes. So tell me about that journey. Like, how did you decide to go to college to study knitting? Well, I was originally, I was very interested in fashion as a young person. Um, and uh, I was living in New York at the time. So uh, the fashion institute made a lot of sense to me uh, to go there because it was close to home. And uh, I guess it was my first semester there where I realized you actually could specialize in knitting. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just fashion. I mean, obviously I had to do draping and sewing and, you know, all that kind of stuff as well. But they offered a, a knitwear specialization and I just thought that was fantastic. Right. Um, so I signed up for every possible knitting class I could. We we learned on hand flat machines. Um, we even had some power machines that we used uh, in college. And this was all the, you know, sort of the beginning um, of when everything was being computerized and, you know, taking off in that respect. Um, but I I just loved all of it. I, you know, the knitting technical classes were just thrilling to me, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, how to um, make the graph for all the stitches. And I just, I, I found it fascinating and joyful. Did it change you as a hand knitter? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think because there's certain things you can do on machine that you can't do on hand and there's vice versa. There's a lot of things you can, you can't do on the machine that you can only do by hand. Um, So you have to design them differently based on the tools that you're using, whether it's a machine or the needles. Um, So yeah, I, I think it did shape how I thought about design, Um, you know, just depending on, the end product and how it's actually going to be made. Can you give me one example or a couple examples of what you cannot do on a machine, what you can only do by hand knitting? Um, there are lots of, some of the tuck stitches that are, you know, like, you know, let's see, I'm trying to think. There's a few things that you can't do. A crochet you definitely cannot do on a machine. Um, and there are some stitches like like an eight stitch cable or some of the really, really, you know, wide things involving multiple stitches that the machine just can't quite handle um, because the tension is just too strong to sort of, you know, and then the yarn breaks. Um, and... So yeah, it's most of the, I would say most of the really complicated um, stitch techniques like cables, and you know, really complicated cables. Not obviously there's cable sweaters that are done by machine, but s- bobbles are really difficult. They can't do, you know, very big knobs and things like that. It just, the machine just, it just turns into a mess. <laughs> After knitting on knitting machines, does the speed of hand knitting ever frustrates you? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the speed. Um, but although I will say there's a, the frustration of a hand flat machine where, you know, one needle gets out of whack and you drop off the machine. So there's there's a different frustration with machines that <laughs> that you don't get in hand and vice versa. Right. Well, you finished the um, Fashion Institute, and then that wasn't enough. You decided to continue to study? Well, actually, when I I did go to Nottingham Trent University in England, um, but that was through my studies at FIT. It was a semester abroad. Um, Right. It was my, I believe I was a junior. It was my junior year of college. Um, and we had the opportunity, there was a small group of us that had the opportunity to go study at Nottingham, um, which was fantastic. It was wonderful because they're very well known for, for knitting um, through the entire industry. Is there like different approach to teaching how to knit in England? In the... There is a very different approach, yes. Um, studying in, in university in England is very uh, hands-off 
you are given a brief at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the semester. And your teacher is really just a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you're, you're, you go off on your own and you have to come back and present, you know, what, what you've researched, what you've learned, your end product. They really don't hold your hand at all (laughs) you know they'll they'll say oh yeah i'll come and answer questions but they really it's it's very much a self-learning experience um and i sort of thrive in that environment so i thought it was wonderful well so after you were done this college what was your career like um well i started as uh an assistant um and i worked for a lot of small companies in the beginning a lot of independent designers, which was a really great experience because you really learn the business um, in and out because, you know, very small staff. Um, And then I eventually uh, went to um, a large corporate environment. Um, I worked for the Jones Apparel Group for many, many years um, and uh, ended up becoming design director of their knitwear department. Um, by the time I, you know, was finishing out my time there. Um, so yeah, that was about a 15 year stretch. (laughs) Right. Well, by that time you've been knitting like all your life. Yes. Made you want to want to go and study at the knitting guild. So when I first finished college, um, I actually was a member of the Knitting Guild. um, And I started the master's program back then, believe it or not, in like the early 90s, I think it was. Um, It was a whole different set of people there then. um, And I was interested in doing the master program back then, just to keep my hand knitting going with all the, you know, uh, um, other knitting happening at the same time. Um, but I just found it to be too much to handle with, you know, the fashion industry is pretty demanding. You don't get home very early at night. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of time for hand knitting. So that all sort of was paused until, you know, I wound down my um, commercial knitting career. And it was something that was in the back of my head from way back when. I'm like, you know what? I never did that. And I really would like to. So that's when I, um, when I had more time and I had the opportunity to sort of um, uh, research, you know, do all that again. Um, I kind of jumped back in and mm-hmm. pursued my master knitting title. <laughs> well, one of my favorite people in the knitting guild is Charles Gandhi and Charles was a guest of my channel a few times actually and he's just an absolute sweetheart he's like very humble very knowledgeable yeah I had the pleasure of meeting him at the last H&H uh, conference yeah, so, yeah it was wonderful. I, like I saw him first time in real life at H&H and it was like the reunion of old friends like, uh-huh. <laughs> he, he gives the best hugs guys Um, So Charles was telling me about his journey with the the guild and how he was studying during this master hand knitting program and that he was very confident in his knitting skills because he also has been knitting all his life. And he sent his first box of samples for the review and he was like, that's so easy like I'm gonna fly right. to the program <laughs> and they returned all of it and he had to redo it three times so uh, <laughs> how was your journey through the guild um I I would say it's similar it's you know you think you really know it all until you realize you don't know it all <laughs> and there's 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 always more to learn and there's the great thing about knitting is there maybe there's more one than one more than one way to do it right um and not that one way is right or wrong but there's one way that could potentially you know give you the results you want and how you want it to look um and I think just going through that process of realizing um and maybe being able to read your knitting much better 
I got much better at saying, oh yeah, wow, I did twist that stitch. I didn't even see that before. Um, so yeah, I, there's always something more to learn. And that's what I discovered when I went through the program, you know, well, just because you, just because you've been doing it all your life doesn't mean um, you can't learn more. Right. Well, when you finish the program, did it give you confidence that now you know how to do it properly? Or did you start second guessing yourself on things that you thought you knew and, and now you weren't even sure anymore? Um, no, I really, by the time I went through and redid the things that I needed to resubmit, um, yeah, I, I am confident now that I, I mean, there's a lot of techniques that I never did before, before I went through this program. Um, you know, just being a knitter and maybe I had done some cables or maybe I had done, I don't know, a few other things, but I don't think I ever did double knitting. I don't think I ever did mosaic or, you know, stranded or any of those things that you're asked to do. Um, so that was also another thrilling thing for me to just really um, get into all those techniques that I had just never um, explored before. Is it very different to write a pattern like as a designer in the industry versus the hand knitting designer? Yes, it is very different. Um, so as a designer in the commercial industry, I am would only be required to fill out a spec sheet, which is basically here's the garment measurements I want it to be in the end. Here's my sketch. And then the knitting technician would program the machine and figure out, you know, stitch for stitch, how to get it made. Right. Um, now that I am writing hand knit patterns, I also have to figure out stitch for stitch, how to get it made. So yeah, um, the designing in commercial knitting is, it's a bit easier for the designer because you sort of hand it off and then it becomes someone else's job to figure out how to get it made. Right. Well, being in the guild, like besides learning all these things, what else did it give you? Like, is there a community that's being supportive there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think just the whole committee, the Knitting Guild committee, they were just so supportive and so amazing with all of their um, encouragement and suggestions. And just, they're really just wanting to help you be a better knitter and enjoy yourself and that's what it's all about and yeah they're I, I, you know they're always there to help you and it was wonderful so talking of h and h uh this is how this collaboration started actually mm -hmm. i went to h and h america's this uh it was in may may yeah this past may of this year yes i and so the Knitting Guild had a meeting in the morning and that same day I had an interview on the main stage that I, I was an inter interviewing um, a quilter. Okay. Hall. So I couldn't stay long because I had to run for the interview and prepare for the stage, but I came for like just 15, 20 minutes just to say hello. I met Charles, I met Donna. I met right. Her. So after that, I saw Donna, and Donna was also Donna Estian. She's also part of the Knitting Guild, and she was on my channel. So if you guys want to watch her interview, you can find it also on my channel. So Donna and I had just sat together and chatted, and it was like, we should do something together. Mm -hmm. So the idea was born of like how we can incorporate my channel and the Knitting Guild. And so immediately I became a member of the Knitting Guild. And all it takes is $35 in two seconds. That's right. So, <laughs> it's like, it's really <laughs> simple. And as a member, you have a lot of benefits. So you, a lot of people think that the Guild is all about the Hand Master Knitter program. But it's only like one of the gazillion programs that the Guild offers. And there's also events, online events. There, there are conferences. There is a magazine that's uh, being published uh, with all the designs from the designers of the guild. So there's a lot of different 
things happening within the guild. There's a lot of untapped, uh, <laughs> right. wonderful things. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, go on the Knitting Guild Association website, and I'm going to put the link in the description of this video, and just like scroll through it and just see all the different programs that the guild offers, and maybe something is going to catch your attention. And I know like my good friend, uh, Stephen Weber, who is a great knitter but he's like he doesn't feel like he has time now for the hand master knitting program he wanted to become a knitting instructor and he said well i'm not i don't really have even though he's a teacher in school he's like i don't know if i have the confidence to just go and start teaching so he's teaching he's taking a class on how to become a knitting instructor there is like a program there and I'll say I, I went through that program as well. Um, I was certified as a knitting instructor and Leslie Gonzalez is just fabulous. Um, she runs that program. Um, and it, I, I agree. It's it, if you're, if you like to teach knitting, um, it really just helps you in how to formulate your classes, how to, how to really structure what you're going to teach. Um, it was super helpful in that respect. Right. And the funny part that I interviewed a lot of hand master knitters from the from the guild, but somehow we always talk about the hand master weaving, uh hand master knitting um program. And I didn't know myself how many programs the guild offers. So every time I go and stumble on something else, like there is a marketing class, there is a class how to become a designer there is a social yeah, in recent years they've really added a lot more um of these programs right uh, so yeah it's every time I, I feel like every year there's there's even more added and there's something new so let's talk about this cardigan and how the idea was born and your vision for this knit along sure so um at that same H and H meeting in May, um, I went. I was at the same uh, knitting guild uh, meeting. Yeah. yeah, the meetup, and um, we started talking about, you know, doing a knitting knit along. And uh, Arenda and Christina um, had this great idea to do sort of a choose your own adventure sweater and they you know the parameters were they wanted it to be a cardigan and they wanted it to um appeal to all levels but you know have some complexity um for some of the higher levels but be e but be you know easy enough for some beginner knitters is that like um, mission impossible when you have to it, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you know something for everybody in one garment um, so I, I did the best I could in terms of trying to figure out, um, how to incorporate all of those things in one. Um, so I've got a couple of different cast ons that you can choose from. There's going to be, uh, a couple of different lengths that the cardigan can be two different sleeve lengths. And then there's also two different stitch patterns that you can choose. So depending on what you choose and where you choose it in your skill level, it's really you going to be able to create something that's just yours, hopefully, um, by the time you're done. And the plan for this cardigan is to have a meetup at Rhinebeck in 2025 mm -hmm. and for everyone to wear it there. So if you're <laughs> planning to go to Rhinebeck in 2025, this is a perfect opportunity to participate in this knit along and then get to yes and have the, 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 the flash mob of pick your pattern cardigans <laughs> so when you did yours was it difficult to decide on which way you're gonna go there's all the options so i'm actually i'll i i'm making two different samples to try and illustrate the different options that they're gonna be um you know, I, I could probably make 10 different versions if I wanted to show all the options. Um, but we narrowed it down to two just so I could illustrate um, the general idea. Um, so I'll, I've got a long cardigan and a short version. And they, you know, one pattern is on one, one pattern's on the other. Um, 
And this cardigan is going to use what kind of uh, yarn weight? Oh, the yarn. It's a fabulous yarn from Pearl Soho. It's called Plain Air. It's a cotton wool, and it's just been a dream to work with. It's just lovely. You're going to absolutely and, love it. And if you want to participate in this knit along, there's going to be a special sort of discount from the company, right? Yes, I believe Pearl Soho. I, I think Donna has made arrangements with Pearl Soho to offer a discount, um, specifically tying into this, uh, to the knit along. So the knit along is going to be happening over Zoom and then published on my channel. And we're going to have some surprise guests. So I can't uh, wait. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting because it's, it's going to be people of all different levels of uh, expertise. So if you struggling with something, there's going to be a lot of experts there who can jump in and help right away. That's true. But it's a perfect place to challenge yourself and try something new because you're in the safe environment where there's going to be somebody able to help you guaranteed definitely so when is this pattern going to be available for everyone to take a look at it yeah so the um pick your pattern card in is going to be published in the winter 2025 um issue of cast on magazine which is um the knitting guilds um online publication and i not sure of the date of of publication for that one but it's the winter issue so it's the next one coming up right so it's going to be like pr probably sometime in november december i believe november is probably yeah i, th I right. think that was the was around the time where it's going to be available so I, I told you, Jennifer, that like before we started that in October, I'm always doing the Stephen West mystery knit along. And this is the third year I'm actually doing it with the human soap West needs and everything. And then as soon as we're going to be done with that, we're going to jump in into more details about this knit along. And it's going to be perfect knit along because it starts in January. So everybody is going to be done with all the holiday gift knitting and that's right <laughs> you're gonna be looking you for can something. knit for yourself now <laughs> right and it's gonna be something comfy you can knit for yourself in january in february it's gonna uh it's gonna be two months long knit along so um please check it out and join and the only thing that you have to have is gonna be the membership in the knitting guild so which is again it's like 35 dollars and you're a member and you'll yep. get the free magazine and you'll get discount on the kit and you'll get to hang out with very knowledgeable people of the Knitting Guild as well. We're going to have some interviews with people who run the guild. We're going to have some surprised guests on every Zoom and you get to ask your questions and share your progress and get to know each other. Absolutely. Is that your first knit along or have you done events like this already? This is actually my first knit along and I'm so excited and so thrilled to do it. Um, I just can't wait. I'm very excited that we're collaborating on this and it's going to be a fun event. Um, I can't wait to start already. I know, me too. It's going to be hard wait, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Time's going to fly, believe it or not. But yeah. <laughs> Did you choose the color for the one that you're going to be meeting? Okay. So the long cardigan version um, I am doing in this color called Tear Vidigris, I think. Is that how you say it? <laughs> it's this lovely petrol. I'm I'm a huge fan of this type of color. So I love that color. My, yeah. Gorgeous. And then the short version that I'm doing, I um, chose this red birch color. Oh, that's is also I, so. You know what? Every I had a really hard time picking the colors for this because <laughs> Pearl Soho just does such a wonderful job with their color palette. Um, and the mix of the wool and cotton together, there's just this sort of high low in how the yarn takes the dye, and it's I, I couldn't be more thrilled. I think. It's it's just lovely. And no matter what color you pick, I think it's going to come out gorgeous. And it probably helps with the draping as well because there is cotton. 
yeah there's it's there's lovely drape but nice stability like it's just uh yeah I couldn't be happier I can't wait to have it all done <laughs> so I can start wearing it Yeah, that's going to be the perfect uh, little perfect cardigan to keep yourself warm in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you just if you don't need, what else do you love doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say I, I love to cook. Uh, I actually um, went to culinary school in one of my uh, minutes where I thought I wouldn't be designing anymore. Um So yeah, I just, I still love to cook and I cook with my daughter and she has quite a, a foodie palate at this point. <laughs> She's only 13, but she, you know, eats more interesting things than a lot of adults do. So I, you know, it's kind of fascinating to watch her. Um, and I love to dance. I love to hang out with my husband and my daughter and my, our dog and, um, you know, just enjoy life. Is there like one dish that you are very proud of that you would make for guests of honor? Ah, uh, let's see. I like to try all different things. So I don't have one signature dish that I, I'm always trying something new. I guess my, my, my turkey chili is kind of a go-to that. <laughs> would you share a recipe? My, yeah. <laughs> Is there like a secret ingredient or can you share your uh, dark beer? <laughs> Ooh, I yeah. haven't tried that. Oh. I put you put Guinness in the sauce. <laughs> so tonight I'm making my turkey chili, which is perfect for the beginning of fall. And to give this a real amazing smoky The secret is a little Guinness. I'm gonna pour that right in there. And that's gonna reduce down and make the most amazing sauce. All right, now it's time to add everything else. We're gonna add turkey. This is, um, just cooked ground turkey, but really the best way to use this recipe is to use leftover roasted turkey from Thanksgiving. It's like beyond. And I'm gonna add some frozen corn just because I like it. No, that's tomatoes. Tomatoes. And two kinds of beans. This is black beans and red kidney beans. I'm going to mix this all up. This is not your traditional chili, but we like it. Hmm. This is going to cook for a little bit longer and then we're ready to eat. <laughs> well, that would make anything. It gives it a lovely smoky flavor. <laughs> I can totally see having some chili while wearing cardigan. Like that uh, sounds absolutely. very comforting. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so very much for being my guest today and sharing your story. Oh, and it's my pleasure. Thank I you for having me. I can't wait to start knitting this cardigan. So we're going to see a lot of each other in January and February. And please uh, hit that subscribe button so you guys are not going to miss all the announcements because we're going to ramp up this uh, knit along. Sometimes starting in November, you're going to see a lot of uh, announcements. So It's such an exciting fall. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> Thank you so very much for being my guest today, Jennifer. Thank you, Irina. It was my pleasure.